uh, one of that competition. What was the that? RP one, is it? No, the RP one. The one at Cine Leisure. Ah, uh, ABC DJ. ABC DJ. <laughs> and my set was terrible. My first one minute was me mashing up River Flows in You and Alive by Cruella. Okay. And there was nothing happening in the first 30 seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome to another episode of Reverie Podcast. And today our guest is Mix or Megan. Whichever uh, you prefer. <laughs> I yeah. am Megan, Max, whatever you prefer. Mix. Hey, Max, you, you know the, is it family guy? Hey, shut up, Max, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know there's the other one, it's like, no, Megan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Key and Peele, you know? Yeah, yeah, Key and Peele is also another legend. But I don't know, man, their, their, their humor is like uncomfortably funny. <laughs> like, you kind of like hit all the right spots, all the, all the wrong spots. <laughs> Maybe if we can uh, start a little bit about yourself. Um, Okay, or rather, give some context why why I am like so interested in uh, doing this podcast with you, right? It's because I think you are like a uh, multidisciplinarian, yeah, in 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 the in the realm of art. Uh. So of course we first met when she decided that she want to be a DJ, yeah. So it's like okay, Megan's like okay today I decided to be boom. Then she will like go and do it, and then it happened, yeah. So maybe you can like jumpstart all the way back in the beginning how do you even like start your artistic journey oh my god we go way back <laughs> yeah dude way back. I, I was like i was like hey hey shit you are like hey i thought you were like this like gen z or something yeah <laughs> like, i also hey. want to be gen z eh? <laughs> yeah i mean the energy like the energy is different yeah so yeah how how what, what's the beginning man how um, was it like you know there's this like very famous quote where it's like you don't know where you're going when we look back, all the dots connect. Yeah, you know, something my life is something like mm. <laughs> uh, correct, I actually correct. started art when mm. I was very young. Um, mm. Started drawing at a young age, but took the art elective program when I was 13 and yeah. continued taking art at A levels. So, did art for six years. Uh, six years? Is that six years? Sec 4 to JC. Wait, yeah, what? correct, correct. Yeah, oh, yeah, from, yeah, 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 from Sec 4 to JC. So, that was like six years of art. And then I decided, enough about art. I will not follow the trope of being a starving artist and okay. do business. Okay. But then I stumbled into DJing and again... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Can, can you tell us all whether that is a starving artist trope? Yeah, I guess so. But like for me, it's like engineering. La. So I'm like, from not starving, become starving. You're from starving, not starving, become starving. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, whenever you try to pursue art, right, all your parents will be like, oh no, this is the end of my kid's life. And you know, I, uh, my next generation is just no more already. You know, they kind of like Asian mentality kind of thing. La. So how do you like kind of keep yourself positive uh, in, in, that, in that sense? That, oh, you can do art for so long, you know. Are your parents very supportive or... Uh, my parents are quite supportive because they go by one true mantra, which is do whatever you want, just don't ask me for money. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, if I can use Fucking my genius. art to make money, go ahead. Lah. So they say if you decide to go and do art and become an artist, then uh, it's your choice and try to make money from it and good luck, all the best. Do you like move out of house very early? No, I'm still staying with my parents. Right, it's a very typical Asian thing, right? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we all do. Yeah, US is like 17, you stay with your parents, right? You're like some... Abomination. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, like, honestly, if you want to be a starving artist, you have to stay at home, lah. Else, you got yeah, no yeah, money to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fun your art. Yeah. So, okay. Of course, you start with visual art, art, right? Is it more like painting or like graphic design or? Uh, I was actually doing a bit of everything, so like drawing, painting, but not not a fantastic painter. Definitely not like Da Vinci level. Um, no, we we Da Vinci resolve though the video editing. <laughs> <laughs> that helps us a lot. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, I think what really interested me, that really got me into art was art history. So mm. even while studying in the art elective program, mm. I love learning about like the artists. Because when you go into a gallery, you really get that contextual information, background information, the story, what inspired them. And when you look at a piece of work, you're really in awe. Because to get to that point where they're able to make that work of art, you're like, wow. This guy. Yeah, I guess it's like we are all like Captain Hindsight, you know. It's like now it's like ah easy, you know. But back then it's like you don't even have freaking anything. You need to chisel. Yeah, how the hell this guy make like rock right, but look like freaking cloth. Yeah. Right, the texture yeah. and stuff. So I mean, if you talk about Renaissance, right? Like one I what I really love is like Michelangelo, and why he was a genius was because he didn't just. Um, create like sculptures by adding pieces of rock together. That's what most people do. He actually took a one single, mm, and then he chiseled away mm. to create his sculptures. And if he, he fucks up, sorry, pardon my yeah, vulgarity, yeah, yeah, yeah. but 
but <laughs> he screwed up. He would throw the entire block away. Yeah. What was that called? Is it like a bedrock or a boulder? It's like a marble. A it's like a marble, marble. A slab of yeah, yeah. literally a slab of marble. Oh. Yeah. Wow, crazy. Yeah, you cannot make mistake. Cannot like blanco and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Then okay. So now the direction that you're going for is like art historian, right? And art historian is traditionally right like old white man, and then it's like very boring, very dull kind of thing. But you kind of like breathe a new fresh air into this. Uh, job scope or genre, yeah. So, how how how? What's your approach? Um, I think for me, when I first started studying art history, I really loved reading about artists that I love mm. or cared about, mm. and there were just funny, weird nuances about artists that I wanted to share with people. Or when I went, you know, on exchange, I was in the US mm. traveling with my friends, and then we mm. go to a museum, and be like, oh my gosh, this work, this work is super famous, and I'd be like, why? And I'll tell them some cool fact, and be like, hey. You should totally like you need a museum tour, man, or yeah, like yeah, yeah. something like that, right? And this was like even before the DJing. Yeah. yeah, 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 before. No, actually, it was like during the DJing phase, but like on exchange, like oh, right, when I was still in university. Right. Right, and then like even at museums, I'll tell my friends some stuff, and then they'd be like, "Hey, that's cool, like interesting fact, didn't know about it." Mm. But it was only during COVID where I felt like, okay, maybe there is a space for me to share my enjoyment with people, um, mm, mm, mm. and it's not just like. Art history is so boring because I had friends who were like, "Hey, I don't even dare to go to the museum. I go in there, I see the picture, I take a picture, and move on, lah. Right? Or yeah, I see a painting yeah, and yeah. I move on." Some people can look at the art and they cry and yeah, yeah, yeah. like, "Wow!" Like the Armin Van Buren estate yeah. or trans the front row. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's like next level um, appreciation and enjoyment, lah. Yeah. So okay, so you are like kind of strong. That's your strong suit, right? But then suddenly, okay, I want to do DJing, like without a uh, hesitation, you know. And then you did pretty well. You are like, I would say, uh, upper quota of Singapore already. If, no, you, no, no. if you think about uh, it, upper quota. If you hear my story of EJ, then you know why. <laughs> yeah, hey, I got all day, man. Okay, okay, so actually, right. Okay, so art first, then. Yeah, so that was art, lah. But then when I went to uni, I was like, okay, I shall not be a starving artist. I'll try something else. DJ looks quite lucrative. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, DJ looks quite lucrative. Maybe la. Yeah. I remember back when I was a kid, right? I went to this. My dad loves like hi fi stuff, like I went to this IT show, and then they were selling this pocket uh, DJ console. You know, back in the day, right? Very expensive, five nine nine. I saw it and I was like, "Hey, Dad, DJing seems like an obscure hobby. Eh. Can I learn or not?" He said, "You got the money, you buy yourself." Uh. back then, like, well, I get five dollars every week or something. Five nine nine. Sorry, yeah. They do part time job. Yeah, I cannot lah. Huh? Mm. So that was like when I was very young. Mm. Suddenly, I came to SMU. I'm like, oh my gosh, they have a DJ club. It's fun, ah. <laughs> Just so happened, right? My fancy, right, in business, uh, business camp was also from the DJ club. He said, "Don't worry, I help you. I give you some insider tips on how to pass." <laughs> what pass? What I got audition? Eight. Yeah, audition. Very, very selective on the DJ club. They had <laughs> lots of applications because everybody think that the club is all about drinking and clubbing. Oh, <laughs> so they want to legitimize themselves. Yeah, correct, correct. So yeah. they'll go into the room and they'll ask you, "Who are your favorite artists?" Then they'll play like some EDM songs and ask you to guess which artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was like back in the day, man. Back in the day, back in the day. So the acceptance rate was about ten percent. Mm. Quite, quite high, high. As in, not not high. I mean, like, I think it's quite strict, lah. Yeah, la. quite strict, lah. Out of or if, more violent than the China the song cow. Wow, I think it was like ten to fifteen percent, lah. Really quite crazy. Like three hundred applicants, thirty people get in, kind. Oh my god. Yeah. And this is quite popular, lah. Yeah, back in the day, back in the day. Yeah. yeah no, I don't know, lah. Then uh, I remember when I first went in, they'll be like. You know, right, as a first year, it's very difficult for you to play an event. Mm -hmm. You must audition, and usually only second years get to play the club. Everyone will play the club, right? Mm -hmm. So I went for my first audition, failed. Oh. <laughs> very badly, and my in the guy who was invigilating me, this guy, back then quite into the DJing scene, one he was like, "Hey, you really cannot lah, huh? Stop, 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 stop." <laughs> oh. You know, like when when in hindsight, right? This all sounds so stupid, you know. But back in the day, it's like, oh my god, such immense devastation, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I was really crushed. Ah, he said, uh, "I think you need to learn how to uh, be better." I don't think this qualifies for the club. And I was devastated because in my batch there was like thirty people. Two of my close friends actually got to play for the event. Oh damn! The ones, yeah. Okay. So I was like, wow. And this was like first audition, right? The guy was like, don't worry. All the best. Just practice a bit more, and you'll make it for the next event. I'm sure. Mm. And then after that, I really practice. I, every single day, I go into the studio, practice, practice, practice. In break, I go studio, practice, practice until sort right. So I practice ah. Uh. Then eventually, I met the guy again. I was like, can you please be my instructor? Can you teach me or not? He said, I give you ten minutes. 
You show me what you can do, then I decide whether. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Ah, uh, then by then I. I hey, wait, wait, wait. Is NUS DJs like so strict, you know? Uh, we are more strict in the DJing. Oh, uh, all right, 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 right. Not like. <laughs> all right. But they got 300 people join, eh? Crazy, yeah. yeah. Apply, apply, apply. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of people put their name down, you know, and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Then, after that, after you show that, him what you got. Yeah, la, then he said, much better! I help you, then he teach me some tricks, la. Then yeah. after that, he also... Once I got his backing, then I also got introduced to some of the other seniors. Then they said, okay, you're mm. not bad. I learned a couple of tricks from here and there, here and there. Then yeah, yeah, eventually, yeah, yeah. like, be a rapper, too. I mean, you know, like, as a DJ. Yeah, have to yeah, learn from yeah. other people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember, did you say that you play certain musical instrument also? Yeah, but no. Other than, know. like, other than the ukulele, is Guitar, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not, not piano or what, right? Used to, when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, the... The way you catch it is very different from how most DJs do it. Like most younger DJs, when they learn, they are just so f- solely focused on the technicality. Yeah, they get so good at the technicality, right? But then when they put everything together, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, in a competition wise, uh. And then when you join the competition, right? It's like a breath of fresh air. It's like, hey, this is not so busy, you know. But yet, uh, it's still something. It's still considered like a substantial level of performance, uh. no, Actually, I still from yeah. Manchester. <laughs> Oh yeah, so maybe you can tell tell us a little bit of a story about you and the uh, Matt Jester encounter. Uh, I don't even know how I met him. I forgot already. Oh, uh, one of that competition. What was the that? RP one, is it? No, the RP one. The one at Cine Leisure. Ah, uh, ABC, ABC DJ. ABC DJ. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Did you join that? I did, I did. And oh, my, yeah. my set was terrible. My first one minute was me mashing up River Flows in You and Alive by Cruella. Okay. And there was nothing happening in the first 30 seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I mean like when you think that you are very good, right? Then after a senior said that you're not good and then you eventually became better and then you look back and then it's like, hey, you know, you know not how much you are better, right? And then the process just keep repeating. Yeah, you look yeah, back, yeah. oh my god, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. And all the way to like senior leisure. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I think it was a bit of chance because um, I did ABC DJ and then Future DJ Better came in. You asked me to join. Is it was it you? Or someone yeah, asked yeah, me to join. Yeah. I think you were like, hey, just try lah, just try. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I asked yeah, Marcus, yeah. I said, hey, you're very good, right? You help me la. You help me la. Wait, he got joined or he joined also, right? But he joined, he never joined. He joined. He was Luke here that there's joined. two, uh, there's two, right? Uh, the that, first one. There's oh. two. He joined one, then Luke here joined another one, yeah. right? Uh. So I joined the same batch as Luke here. Okay, okay. Now, of course, I come from Luke against Luke here. Yeah. Anyway, not the point, but. <laughs> <laughs> not the yeah. point. I, I love them all, but um, yeah, um, I was like, hey, Marcus, you help me la. And then he's like, uh, actually, right, just nice. I'll take you in as my protege because I want to test myself and see whether. I can teach this or not. Maybe I can monetize this. I was like, okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you're yeah, you're the same man. <laughs> you're the same energy, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just the quite funny. And then I was like, okay, yeah, you teach me that. Like, if I teach you, you must join, ah. I say, okay. So really, I really dedicated myself to it. Like we spent quite a bit of time. I think he taught me some tricks, and then spent quite a bit of time coming out with like a number of sets. Ah. I was quite sad I didn't get to play all of my sets mm. but there were actually some sets that were pretty interesting i still keep the stems like don't yeah, know yeah, when yeah. i'll ever record it maybe never but yeah <laughs> maybe someday i think that back in the day that, that second future dj battle was like a uh, round robin elimination style right because you know why y'all yeah. did um one match with one fight with ten two fight with nine yeah, like yeah, that yeah. something so i was like five and look here was five and i was six so I was oh like, shit my first opponent was look here so i was obviously out Wow, this is like you you very fond memories for you, uh. I I organize this shit and I forget, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what the heck? Yeah, it was like randomized. Like we just pick everybody, we just throw, and then we just like toss, like, and then we let somebody else pick the numbers, and it just so happened to to be out like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite yeah, it's quite fucked up, la. Yeah, in a, in a sense. Yeah, five five. Yeah, look here is definitely next level, man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he won also by. The he mixture of here. musicality and technicality, you know. The second place is NREF, which is like yeah. 10 times more technical, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but then I guess the best of both worlds is still the... Hey, but NREF was an interesting kid. Uh. Yeah. Like when I spoke to him, he told me something very funny. I don't think, I don't know whether he tell y'all before, but he said that he's, you know the Mr. Bean logo? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he meh? Is his, his father designed it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's inspired by him, the Mr. Uh. Bean logo. 
So I cute, right? I still remember that. That's all I remember about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All these are like very technical DJs of Singapore. La. Back in the day when like technical abilities mean something. But nowadays, right, is actually you don't even need to be a good DJ anymore. Uh, sadly, which sadly. Oh, so sad. Yeah, if you can gather like 100 friends, right, the venue will be like, okay, let's do an event with you. Mm. But if you're a good DJ, nope. Actually, have you ever thought about collaborating yeah. with all these like influencers to do something? Like- I don't know, eh. I don't know. That's a very good question. Mm. Yeah, because um, I would say we would like to focus on the music, but that's not the the reality of it lah. We, we cannot really like make a living just by focusing on the music lah. so there has to be some form of like uh, promotion or gimmick or yeah but I don't know man how we can pitch it together yeah because also the influencers right or your regular influencers they are known as like the B group people you know you have the A vendor B and C which is the masses right your B will attract the C right? but for us we are the A we attract the B then the B attract the C, right? And the C is the masses, right? They just want to hear Taylor Swift and Coldplay, yeah, you know? True. And we don't play Taylor Swift and Coldplay. Right, how? Oh. Right, how? Hey, I'm a normie. Sorry, y'all excluded me already. Hey, dude, you DJ competition, eh? Oh my yeah. god. Oh, you don't remember my set, man. My, is, my set is all pop songs, eh? But the, how to say, uh, you understand the music in a way that you are not narrow minded, law. Even though you play pop song, right? But you can understand a good piece of underground music when it's being displayed to you. You don't like, eee, no, no singing. I remember one of the one of your normies, right, said that, e, what, what's this genre of music? No singing one. No, who will listen to this kind of thing? <laughs> and the person in the comment section, fuck you, man. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we, we support underground and mainstream music equally, right? Uh, e, regardless, uh, whatever it is, la, as long as it's good, it touch our heart, and it generates a certain level of emotion and yeah. te- technically sound, you know? Yeah, no, no clash key, everything. Yeah, then we support it really. It's simple as that. And it's apparently a concept very difficult to be digested by most people. Yeah, yeah it is what it is. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. The reality is that some people just have preferences for certain kind of music than others. Yeah, precisely. And not saying that underground music people are better than mainstream people. Yeah, because no. underground people are it's also different. equally narrow-minded. Also, certain. Just yeah. different. Uh, yeah. Just different. Also can. Yeah. Yeah, then... Uh, yeah, so... After music, uh, why didn't you like continue? Is it like you bored of it already? Uh, to be really honest, I told myself after Future DJ Battle that I would take a break mm. because I felt at that point in time I had reached the peak of DJing um, in terms of like technicality and what I wanted to learn. And the next step for me was really more of like turntablism. That was something that I didn't able to accomplish and learn to a level that I wanted to. La. But I felt like that was a lot of time needed yeah. because I mean like and Rev was telling me you need like 7-8 hours he practiced 7-8 hours a day just to get where he's at and you have to really get a muscle memory to be able to even play that level mm-hmm. you know but if that was something that I could do right I think the world would open up to me so much in terms of like DJing mm-hmm. because just of how technically flexible turntablism is yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. correct correct um yeah, that's the thing. But also, like, if you look at the world most renowned turntables, right, and Scratch DJ, which is Cubert, right, he's probably making like ten k a show only, as compared to your other press play DJs where are making like hundred thousand a show. You know, it's definitely more viable for them because they got more money. Then they can spend more money yeah. on infrastructures, creating yeah. more symbols like themselves, and yeah, you know, yeah, propagating yeah. themselves even further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and. Turntablism, however technical it is, it's just gonna stay in underground art, la, which is quite sad. Red Bull Tree Styles, eh, closed down. DMC, eh, closed down. down. Everything yeah. all closed down already. Yeah, so all the big institution that represents like uh, high level DJing or technical DJing is really no more. La. So yeah, some people ask me, hey, you know, jump start it back. La. But then I'm like, dude, I'm busy being a struggling artist. <laughs> Somebody throw some fun funding, then we can make it happen. La. But if not, it's so difficult, you know. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what's really sad about most crafts, right? Is that yeah. they're always like, dying art around and the sad reality is that it's so amazing but no one or the masses don't appreciate it and it's difficult to like then pass on to someone who's willing to take that out and learn it then it just gets lesser and lesser over the years I remember what Echo said Echo said something like everything is about commerce and if there's no commerce right it cannot survive like for example right the printing press you know now right there's only one person that still do printing press the old school way which is like he'll arrange the letters in a block and then he'll paint it yeah, yeah, and then yeah. he stamp yeah, yeah. That's it. And now it's like automatic already. Now you don't even need paper. Now it's like yeah. online scrolling already. Yeah. yeah, so I guess you have to evolve, lor, if not. Yeah. 
Yeah, just, so sad. Yeah, so sad, right? Yeah, so, but then the thing is, rather than evolve, for you, right, you like take it back to the old school, you know, art history about telling tales, lah. Yeah, so how did you from DJing, right, then you suddenly just go back to it? Is it like a old love kind of thing? Uh, not really like an old love. Uh. It's first more love. Of, not really like a first love. So more of uh. coincidental. I actually was clearing my house um, because I have nothing better to do during COVID. And uh, I mm. found all my art books because I study art at A-levels, right? And mm-hmm. we, as part of the syllabus, we have to study 50 artists, including um, American artists, Southeast Asian artists, and Singaporean artists. So mm. out of that, syllabus right there will only be 10 questions that come out i think about 10 questions that come out and see your luck lah, which artist you get lah. Mm. so you got to memorize the artworks what's the name of the artwork when the artwork was created what the artist's background history is insp- inspiration which movement and hopefully the question come out something that you study you know? mm. um yeah so i actually studied a lot back in the day and i was like wow i spent so much money on all these books should i try to help people uh, rediscover their love for art before I show it away. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, that gave birth to my TikTok channel. Uh. Yeah. And then it like, kind of like blew up from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when you talk about art, right, there are a lot of cases where people just simply draw a story and then talk a lot of about it and then it suddenly become big or paste one banana on the wall and then everybody starts for taking photo about mm-hmm. it. So uh, this comes into the question of like the legitimacy of art la, itself, you know, because it, some art is so abstract, right, that there are so many knockoffs, right, that you cannot really even tell. Yeah. Yeah, so it, how, how do you all like prevent yourself from being con? Maybe sometimes your own self also kind of con. Um, I think it depends on what kind of art it is and when it was produced. So for example, if you go to a museum and you see a Renaissance painting, hmm. I think the aura of the painting is very different. Mm. Like what you see in a picture like a Mona Lisa, everyone is so desensitized to the Mona Lisa. Mm. But view it in person and you're like, wow, shit, actually this work is much more beautiful in real life and there are nuances, there are like strokes in the painting that it cannot be captured in like a flat image, mm-hmm. right? So oftentimes I feel like there are certain types of works that you need to see in person to understand the value and the hype around it and the environment that it gives of you just being that work itself, right? Mm. And I think you know, once you feel that you're like, oh, this work is, I mean, that gives legitimacy, lah, right? That's why these famous artists are given that, are put on the pedestal to say like, okay, they are amazing, they are wonderful because they make someone feel a certain way with their art. Right, it's right? like a big ass yeah, space yeah, yeah. and then just one ah, Mona Lisa in the center yeah, 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 of a yeah, big yeah. ass space. Yeah. And then you feel the, it's not just a painting, but the atmosphere, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like you talk about being con, right? Uh, I think that one is a bit more technical. Uh. So at one point in time, I was like into this phase where I started watching all these like, art con shows on like Netflix. Right. And then they'll tell you like, oh, there are certain periods of time where like this colour didn't exist. So if you use it, that means this art is not real. Like by this painter, he never used like, the colour white. So like there was actually like a con man that got caught because he used the colour white and white as a paint colour never existed at that point in time. Oh. In that year that this painting was supposed to be made. Lah. So wow. put under x-ray, put under colour analysis, goodbye. Lah. This guy got caught. Lah. Mm. But this guy is like a super famous, like he, I think, don't know whether he went to jail, but he's super famous for copying styles of like famous artists. He can copy exactly down to the thing. And mm. he even create fake paintings, like fake unreleased paintings of this guy, like people and sell. What the shit? Wow, crazy. It's like a nerd versus nerd battle. Correct, man. correct, correct, correct. Damn. Okay, yeah, there, there are definitely people that take this like super seriously to go mm-hmm. to the detail of conning people and people's full-time job is to review the con. con. Yeah, That's correct. crazy, dude. All these people, what the yeah, heck, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then I mean, like, you talk about the other topic which is around like being conned by art that is not art, lah, right? Uh, like oh, you talk yeah, yeah. about like the banana or whatever. Then there's also another movement which is like, pop art or installation and conceptual where the beauty of the artwork itself is not the art but the idea, mm. right? So that means like... Example. Example like, uh, this is not a pipe. This you is know, not a pipe. Like the painting where it's a pipe and then the word is like, this is not a pipe. Uh-huh. So basically like, the are like, huh? But this is a pipe what? Like mm. it's a picture of a pipe there. Mm. He said, yeah, it's not a pipe because it is a picture of a pipe. It's a painting of a pipe. It's not an actual pipe. Mm. Mm. Right. And then there's a lot of like, other philosophical things about it. Lah. So people are like, wow, this is damn cool, but actually it's a simple thing. Mm-hmm. Or it could be like something as simple as like you put a light bulb on the wall and then you just say it's like light. Like maybe that's the word. 
And then you're like, as an artist, you say, oh, this is to give us the revelation that in darkness there can be light. <laughs> that kind of shit, like, right? You know? You draw a circle to Angkok, yeah. basically. Correct, correct. Yeah. And then people yeah. who feel inspired by the idea, I'll buy it. La. Right. I mean, uh, there's one from Banksy, right? Yeah, where yeah, yeah. he was like, okay, uh, I'm about to sell the most expensive <laughs> painting, <laughs> he right? He shredded it. Yeah. And then the, the frame is actually, the, the painting, the frame, right, is a shredding machine. So when the person sold, right, they, they beat, 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 sold, right, then the painting just shred itself. Yeah. And that is the art yeah. of, like, everybody just horrified. Mm. Yeah. Now, I mean, there are people who can afford to buy that LV mini bag that you breathe and then it's gone, lah, so. Oh, the <laughs> microscopic <laughs> grain of rice. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, their artwork is probably nothing to them, lah. They can... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good, it's good, yeah, yeah. yeah. Inside the coffee. Yeah. But, like, who, what, what is that? What is that grain? Is it, like, a sand or... or, or? It's or like it a, a 3D diamond? 3D printer or something. It's like super small. So, oh, the material is like probably acrylic or something. Yeah. Right? It's not like diamond or no, what, right? No, it's like, then gone like, I don't know where I go. Oh, I fall on the heck? floor. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, where was I thinking? Okay, you know, there's this like auction house called, uh, starting from V1. I forget what is it called already. Uh, I also cannot think. Right, right, right. You, you know, right, there's this auction house that there's like recently they are auctioning the uh, Salvador Mundi yeah, or yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Uh, like. I thought uh, it was Sotheby's, but I don't think it's Sotheby's. It's no, no, someone no, no, else. No, no, it's, um, no, no, no. Okay, never mind. Continue. Then. Yeah. yeah, so basically, these places they auction 300 million, 100 million kind of artwork. And then, you know, certain buyers cannot even be there. So they have like phones and stuff and people calling yeah, in to yeah, beat correct. real time. So, uh, I don't know. Music doesn't have that kind of space. I feel like music is more accessible. But art, in a sense, has its own like exclusivity market, right? I guess it's more like a music on vinyl kind of style. Yeah. So, I don't know. Eh? How does that even benefit the artist in the first place? It doesn't, right? Now. Uh, I think it really depends. Oh. I mean, a lot of these artists that they're buying up, they probably are mostly dead. Yellow. If they're not dead, then they're, um, I mean, they've played the game well. La. I wouldn't yeah. say they're capitalists. Like, people are like, yeah, sell out. But no, I don't think that they sell out. They just played the game well. They're not following the starving artist trope. Yep, yep, Why yep, do yep. they need to anyway? Um, but, you know, I... He's like Picasso, and then now his family is like fighting each other. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. if you're alive and you manage to win the game, then, to be honest, I think good for you. Mm. Because why do you have why why do you have to follow or you know stay with the conventional norm that you have to be poor to be an artist? You mm. could be rich and be an artist, right? So in okay. a way, it benefits the artist. I think a lot of times people also don't buy art for art sake. Sometimes they Status. buy investment or like so. You know, if you go to an art school, sometimes at your graduation show they will have like investors that come down and probably look at your work, mm. and if they think that you are someone that has potential, they will actually buy up your work first because or in hopes that you'll become big and they can sell your work later. Mm, so yeah. step one, stay alive long enough to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> or just monetize your work and really commercialize it. I mean, be shameless about it, it la, right? Uh, yeah. So okay, um, how do artists be shameless about it? Example. I, I really cannot talk to art, like fine art artists, but maybe I can use music artists as an example, right? Mm. Um, like, you know, TikTok is very prevalent these days where a lot of these musical artists are putting out their music and consistently making, playing the same track over and over again, but with different video visuals, mm. right? I think from a normal artist perspective, you'll be like, eee, very cringy, or mm. I feel very gross because like, how can I, ooh, how can, the like, eek, right? Like, how can I put the same song out 50 times. Mm. I just thinking about it might, might make you cringe. Uh, I mean, that's the way they promote that song that yes. they make, right? Yes. Yeah, but yeah. to like someone who's not really on TikTok, who's not really watching stuff like that, you might be like, oh, 50 times? I don't know whether my audience wants to watch the same thing. Yeah. But I think what they don't realise is that somewhere like TikTok or Instagram Reels, you're reaching a new audience every time. So mm. even though you have 50 videos of the same thing, you are reaching 50 different groups of people who may be watching it for the first time. And maybe your friends only see three versions. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So I think it's really about believing in your craft and willing to having the willingness to kind of put it out there. If not, mm. you know, if you are so scared of putting yourself out there to criticism, to feedback, to people watching it, then you never really know if your song is a hit or not. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, I think... Uh, quite a lot of people do that. It's like uh, Tiago, the rapper. 
or like the JVKE. Yeah, JVKE is actually a very weird one though. Is he an industry plant? Do you think so? Oh, uh, because don't he don't he don't put out one thing fifty times though. He just one freaking millions of view, one millions of view. Oh, it's but quite he unlikely, but he actually right? gained traction from his that one song already, uh. And he actually did quite a bit of actually like, before stuff. that actually he gained traction by collabing <laughs> with his mum. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, was yeah, the one yeah, that gained yeah, traction. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then after oh, that, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, it was the oh yeah, he and his mom produced, and his mom is also a producer, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's I guess the thing that capture capture people lah. Yeah, um, I don't know for music, I don't see like a bidding war kind of situation, right? Compared to like art. So, yeah. I don't know, but do you not think that regardless of the craft, if you have money, you can make it? I mean, it's like the rich get richer lah. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, you don't have to sing, right? You don't have to sing well. You can just pay money to a ghost producer and then pay money for promotion for your song and then pay money for stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But how do you reap the benefits, though? It's an investment, all right? Yeah, but you're investing to get more. Yeah, if you can, yeah. but if not, you'll be a loss, eh? Yeah. Right or not? I mean, like, you, you must can, make it. Uh. Yeah, like, you can go to the US and find, like, a very good producer. I mean, I'm sure even in Singapore you have yeah. uh, paid 10k for a song. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I I guess probably that's how uh, most people doing music are well to do. Uh. <laughs> and then then they make it lah. Then the rest of us are just starving because we are the uh, middle income people, all right? No? I mean, you can do that yeah. with art also. You can commission someone else to do it for you. Mm. Then you're just a conceptual artist. Yeah, executive producer. Yeah, that's right. DJ Kelly. <laughs> Another one, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, he really made it, lah. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he started from the bottom, and then he reached a certain point, and he's like, okay, everybody, now you all do, now you all do, yeah. yeah. So that one is like next level, lah. It's a it's a def- different level, definitely respect, lah. Yeah, but yeah, man, rich versus poor. Okay, so maybe you got a strategy. How can we make it as a poor artist? Wow, I don't know, man. That right, one we, we don't have shameless, ah. We need to spam content, right? That's yeah, the way, right? Yeah, spam content. I mean, like, okay, I think a lot of people get the ache because they think that. You know, like, what if my friends who follow me get irritated by my content? But then the reality is this. If they don't want to watch your content, then they can unfollow you lah. But if they were your friend, they will truly support you, right? Correct. And I think also a lot of us are inspired by um, our favourite artists. But then the thing is, like, our favourite artists are all backed up by major record label. Like, for mm. example, we love Drake, we love Skrillex, we love Tiger, all these, right? They, they can act cool right by just posting one post about their song and then they post like fucking 20 million interactions you know yeah. and then they don't need to do anything else with yeah. it because there's a lot of engines behind it that is like supporting this yeah. one post but for us we don't have that money or that infrastructure right to replicate that same uh, outcome right mm. we need to post 50 times yeah and honestly I think let's not forget that they work hard and paid their dues to get to where they are already right they've probably mm. made like 10,000 like flop songs before they even had one hit single got signed mm. and then got there and then they amassed their fan base and that's why they have that 20 million interactions right but mm. probably their first hit wouldn't have been like that it took a while for them to get discovered they probably played shows probably did have a lot of people following them in the beginning right yeah it's like Drake did his first gig for $100 and he's like opening up for some other artists and then from there, he just like start becoming an actor. He's, he's really the definition of like commercializing his art. La. Like everybody is like, you know, making fun of him. Ah, you're a kid actor, you're like Disney or whatever. And then suddenly now he start rapping about dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess um, uh, we should start playing more uh, Taylor Swift stuff. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can invite me, la. how about that? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wear the Taylor t shirt. Yeah. I don't have Taylor Swift tickets, so anyone want to sponsor me, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. What was I thinking about? Um, yeah, so music, commercialization, and then it moves on to um, surviving, uh, which is like your marketing job. Yeah, so what made you uh, decide to venture into business? Because you were uh, all about the art first, which is like art, art, uh, like uh, history and stuff. And then eventually you thought, hey, DJing is like more lucrative, but then somehow you kind of fulfilled your uh, passion, really, whatever you want to do, your to-do list, your checklist done already, right? And then you want to move on to something else. In COVID, you do the art history thing for fun and somehow it pop out. But then, you still have to survive with a day job, right? Yeah. So, um, why did you choose what you do now? And what is it that you do now? Uh, so, I, I think the DJ thing and the marketing thing came hand in hand. So, when I was in uni, I think a lot of people don't know this, but I was really struggling in uni. 
Uh, Struggling. Yeah, like first year did like quite badly. Couldn't pay attention in classes, had like so many things on my mind. Art people things. Yeah, but like DJ really saved me lah. Cause I feel like I was every day I was like stressed, like crying at school and stuff. Mm. But then like the more I practiced the DJ, like skills that I had and like listen to great music, right? Like I could really focus on after that, right? I go home, I can study, I can do all my assignments, I was really on track. And then my grades really became much better. And then for marketing, I just had a natural flair for it, like understood all the concepts very easily. Not like finance, you know, finance you gotta study, do the assignment. Same as ops management, uh, not my cup of tea. Uh, numbers, not, uh, not my best friends, but I can deal with them. Mm. But marketing was really fun and exciting for me. Uh. So after a while, I started to look at stuff like advertising, I looked at other marketing career options, and then I actually got into like the whole CRM thing. So it was like anal- analytical kind of stuff, but still marketing. Uh, and then I got a great opportunity uh, to join like a marketing kind of role with like a mix of that. Uh, that was not in music, unfortunately, but, mm. uh, but still something that I really enjoyed at that point in time. Had great people, great environment. Uh, so yeah, la, unfortunately, because of that great opportunity, I actually passed up my passed up on my passion for music. La. At, at some point in time, I was very inspired because when I was on exchange, I took two classes on sound design for theatre. Mm. And I was like, wow, lofty aspirations. Wanted to like stay there for an extra month or two months or three months, shadow someone, mm. do something there. Uh, but my parents said no, la, so I had to come back. Uh, came back here, I did like a mini attachment for like a, a boutique uh, music firm. Mm. And then after that also went to, someone else managed to get me like an internship of offer at a sound design agency mm-hmm. that did like for movies and stuff like that. Uh, but I got the offer for the marketing role together with this at the same time. And then I chose the marketing role instead. La. So that's why I'm in the marketing space now. I think marketing is more people centric, right? Compared to like business, right? Mm-hmm. No? So I guess you are like more in tune with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, working the crowd, you know, your DJing stuff. And I think one very interesting fact is you don't drink coffee. Yes. You don't you don't need a perk me up. Yes. You just wake up and listen to music and suck in the vibes, man. Yeah. That is crazy, dude. Yeah. How how do you like just listen to music and then like yeah? That's why DJ is great for me. Like yeah, I always so. feel super energized when I DJ. I uh, love it. And for me, like the joy about DJing is how do I mix two songs together? Hmm. I think that's like super fun and exciting for me. Yeah, two songs that make sense. Uh. A, a lot of us are just looking at the technical technical as- aspects of it and then it kind of like sounds like a mess even though it doesn't sound like a mess if you, you know yeah. what I mean, right? And it's like sometimes you scratch the right itch in your brain. It's like, whoa, oi, these two songs just go together. <laughs> I don't know how to like, say it, but... It is. Yeah, so what are the kind of music that you listen to when you are like trying to like get a perk me up in the morning? Rock ah? Oh. I'm a normie. Pop. <laughs> oh, pop music Singapore ah. top 50. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess they have a way into um, yeah, people's playlists. He's yeah. not convinced ah. He's like, sorry, only techni- techno, tech house. Um, For me, I, I feel that music, right? Whatever music that you listen to, right? If... People trick you into listening it, right? It's not what you actually like. Uh, actually, like what I really love about pop, and I really appreciate, right, is the earworm aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, there are so many songs, right, with a hook, right? But why are certain songs, right, stuck with you? Very good example, right, is you listen to Despacito. You know yeah, Despacito, yeah, yeah, when yeah, it first yeah. came out, we love it. But because it takes the- Justin Bieber, right, to collab, right? Then it become a worldwide form- uh, phenomenon. So if you think about it, it might not... Be actually that dope of a song. No, but for example, yeah. a song like Worth It, yeah. the intro riff or like Don't Let Me Down, mm, 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 like mm, mm. those I really love and I really appreciate. Like some pop oh. songs, fine. Like they're yeah. famous, they're famous, you know, but some yeah. that I really love to use in my set list are those with like the very catchy intros. Intro scenes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, right. how do these people come out with such a genius hook yeah. to make me want to listen to this again? And it's always the same guy. You also go and Google Max Martin, man. This guy is crazy. How much he charge? Can I be a capitalist and ask him to produce a song Dude, for me? This guy is like, <laughs> he literally produced like all the top uh, pop charting tracks, you know, like literally everything. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really too sure, but I know there's a lot. Like probably he produced for Celine Dion, uh, uh, Britney Spears and everything, uh, everything that you heard of. I don't know, is that toxic, all these kind of songs by him? But yeah, he has a Wikipedia page. He has like so many number one songs. I like, I, I can't even keep track. Uh. And he he famously always has that kind of like intro uh, thing to suck you in. Uh. And that's the best way, you know. 
uh, to 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 stay as a professional musician uh, is if you can monetize it. Uh. I'm convinced that all these people, right, they really hear it already in their head mm -hmm. and they just produce it. Like, these people are just gifted. They have it already. I guess their gift, right, happens to can oh, make inside. money. Yeah. Yeah. Some oh, people gifted inside somewhere. Inside. Yeah, yeah. You know, some people gifted play the arcade game. Oh yeah, <laughs> but hey, that kind also can monetize one. Tap Tap Revolution, right? But then they're just there every day. Yeah. They, maybe they haven't found a way to monetize it yet. Can. That kind, yeah. right, you put it on TikTok and watch, let people watch you play, right? Then also can or the live stream, right? Uh. Yeah. I want to, okay, let's, let's go a little bit about TikTok, man. It's like some of the weirdest stuff I see down there. I see like some homeless guy, right? And then he live stream himself sleeping on the street. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then people <laughs> just give him money. <laughs> and then they're all those like sleeping, and like sleeping now. Yeah. Uh, castle to, for, to a loud horn or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know how they program it, right? But yeah, if you follow yeah. him one time, then there will be like an air horn blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll wake up one time. Then he will do it like 48 hours or something. Then he'll just die. Yeah, there's quite a lot of funny stuff la, going on on TikTok. And um, I don't know, man, do you, do you think that TikTok is like kind of uh, the, the way forward? I mean, it has really been the, the go-to right medium for a lot of people. Yeah. But uh, do you think you can kind of like sustain a career out of it? Or is this more for reach? Or? Um, I think you are doing it the right way, which is that if you want to get like new audiences, TikTok's the place to go. But if you want to build a community, YouTube is the place to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and like the fact that you're saying you're getting like, comments and stuff on a YouTube video means that this is really the right place. Mm -hmm. um, on TikTok, I feel like it really depends. You can build a community there, but only if you have a personality, people care about who you are. If you're just giving random facts like art, it's going to be very difficult. Uh. So for me, a TikTok account like that can be monetizable mm -hmm. if I'm okay with not being an influencer and I just want to talk about whatever that I love, which is art and art content. Got boring for me after a while uh, because um, I think for me I need to be creating content that enriches me and makes me feel good like not about myself but more of like how do I share something that I care passionately about in a very personal way sharing fun facts about art is always just going to be factual it's never going to be that level of passion for me uh. I guess it's like you're a human right art is just one of the many yeah. things you like Maybe tomorrow you just want to talk about burrito, you know? Yeah, and unfortunately, TikTok, the TikTok algorithm doesn't allow that. Like, it makes me, Correct. you know, it just makes my audience lose interest in the content that I want to talk about, which is burrito. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, with a different account, I can talk about whatever I want, be who I want, and that kind of content gives me a lot more joy than just making art content. Mm. So, so did your content, like, evolve? Or you just stick to it? Yeah, I started a whole new account. Oh, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then the old one just stayed there. La. Yeah, the old one just stayed there. Lor. I Inactive. mean, like, a lot of people ask me why I don't want to monetize, continue monetizing, but we'll see how it goes. Um, maybe one day I'll finally feel inspired again and start posting art content because I still love art. I just need to, I guess, find a new way to breathe life into the art content that I... But how do you monetize, though? Like, um, sponsored deals? No, right? Yeah, or just yeah. through deals because yeah, they don't have you know YouTube got a watch per yeah. watch hour watch yeah, yeah, views yeah. all this kind of thing you monetize right? but TikTok yeah. don't have right? yeah. so. I think I think there's definitely a space for art history I mean like not from a monetization sense but there's a gap lah, right I think there are a lot of you know the government's putting a lot of money in the arts and they want people to be more interested in the arts but how do you get people more aware or educated about the arts for them to care about it even more mm -hmm. and that is around like art education mm -hmm. but there's no way for me to get art education unless I go for an intentional short course or study art history right and that's so difficult for so many people mm -hmm. um, but if there's a way for them to get bite-sized information I think that's like the right way to go yeah correct yeah. because I think most people especially in Asian countries right they study so that they can get a high paying job. Correct. They don't study just because they love the subject. Yeah. Yeah. I think most, I, I cannot really speak for most people, uh, but I will say a great number of people, right? Be it from wherever you are, we just want to work and spend time with our family. The end, you know? Yeah. yeah we don't want to like pursue something that, oh, yeah. cannot make money, am I? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's like why all the parents are like worried when you try to do music, all that kind of thing. Hey, also cannot make money. I'm not a doctor, lawyer, engineer, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of thing. They, they feel like it's pointless. Uh, it's like a means to no end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite and sad, quite sad. Yeah, and I think the reality is that like somewhere in the US where people are more into the arts, you can talk about, you know, the challenges or like difficult topics or challenging conversations around like certain artists or certain topics about art, right? But I think in Singapore, people don't want that to be their first interaction with art. It's like, I'm already scared to go into the art gallery to, to see this work. I don't even know this artist. I've never heard this artist of this artist before. Even if it's a famous artist, I see this work in front of me, I'm like, oh, okay. How, <laughs> how, do I, how do I appreciate this work? That's the question I always get a lot, yeah. right? So for me, it's like, how do I give you simple information for you to feel like, hey, actually art history is not so hard. 
Mm. Right? If I tell you like, hey, this guy is an impressionist painter and like he painted this thing and like you can see this one is all about like feeling and emotion. But you know what? It's very controversial because XYZ. Mm. You might be scared, you're like, shit, that's like a whole essay worth of information, right? Mm. But if I tell you like, actually his work is very simple. It's about capturing the here and now. So if you feel that fleeting moment, it's like a snap of a camera. You can be like, hey, even simple people can understand. Right? Mm, 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 mm. So, again, you know, commercializing your work, oh. Yeah, I mm. mean, I think it's just making it accessible for people. Yes. But in a fast manner on TikTok that people can understand, as compared to saying my opinions about it, like, I mean, I can. But do you want to hear my opinion? I don't want to hear my opinion. Unless you like famous enough, lah. Yeah, lah. Not famous, uh, lah. So uh, no need to hear my opinion, lah. Yes. Yeah, starting form. up, must eat shit first, yeah, lah. Yeah, Form your own opinion, lah. Just read my art TikTok and then make your own opinion about it. How about that? Oh, uh, yeah, lor. That's why we always ask people uh, comment down in the comment section below. What, what should we do next? <laughs> <laughs> should we drink more now? <laughs> because our drinking content is like so <laughs> happening. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, man. And then now, uh, there's a new social media, Xiao Hong Shu. How have you already entered it? Uh, I'm on it, but for non-creation purposes. Um, yeah. How how is it different? Uh? I actually never even stepped foot into it. I don't know if you all have heard of Lemonade. No. Hey, Lemonade, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Lemonade yeah, yeah, got yeah, like yeah, multiple yeah. countries, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. So Lemonade is trying to be the Xiao Hong Shu of the West. Oh. Yeah, but Xiao Hong Shu is amazing. La. I honestly want to let you all know, if you actually need resources, right, go there and find. Because Xiao Hong Shu has every freaking thing. Mm. Like, my friend, Opened the world to me and now suddenly like Xiao Hong Shu is my go-to place. I mean, my best friend loves Xiao Hong Shu. Finds like nail art there and don't know what funny things on there like. Hey Sha, did we find like the ID design shit all down there from Xiao Hong Shu? Right, yeah. yeah crazy, yeah. They the have heck? like they even have like zodiac readings of you though. You can even find everything there, like astrology or whatever. Anyway, my friend tells me that I can find like GMAT helpful information on Xiao Hong Shu. What the heck? Even I L. So if you're like a foreign student and you're learning like IELTS, right? You can read Chinese, right? Please go to Xiao Hong Shu because people tell you when exactly which month is the best time to take the exam and why. <laughs> they even have actual questions from the test bank because these students from China come and take it. Then they remember the questions, right? Then you write it down and then post on Xiao Hong Shu. Of course, you. everybody of in China course. has photographic memory. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> why am I even questioning it? Uh, anyway, some context Xiao Hong Shu, right? It's like small. Uh, a red book. book, yeah, a little red book, right, in, in Mandarin. Uh. It's basically uh, uh, Pinterest meets TikTok, right? That's the best way to... Yeah, I want to say... No, Tumblr meets yeah, TikTok. Yeah, Tumblr meets TikTok meets Pinterest meets, uh, like, um, uh, Taobao, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you feel like you can shop, but then yeah. it cannot yet, you know, they haven't yeah. unlocked or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But got yeah. videos of models and clothing and nail art and you can save but then you can also I don't know like I have a friend that works at Lemon 8 and then I'm like what the heck is a Lemon 8 yeah? and then it's like media company but it's like so vague you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so Lemon 8 is basically the Xiao Hong Shu of the West yeah, la. yeah. but has it already in, uh, entered Singapore? Entered Singapore uh, but they're still trying to build a community mm. I think for in my opinion la, Lemon 8 is where like all the mid size not micro creators have migrated to a new platform in hope that they will get an audience there and then they can grow mm. their other platforms. But like Lemonade is pretty big in Thailand. Very, very big in from an earned content, organic content space. Ah. So if you're looking for like unfiltered content, real opinions, Lemonade is the place to be. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you want a bit more entertainment, a bit more fun stuff, then TikTok's the place to be. Ah. Mm, so many social media and uh, wow, you know, um, for myself, right, I'm already like 30, 33 this year, right, and then like to keep up with so many social media is really like, it's my job, uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm quite interested in social media, but most people my age, right, is like, I think they are stuck at the Facebook generation, yeah, they, in, going to Instagram is really like a chore, they don't even have a display pic for some <laughs> of them, yeah, so, yeah, for people that want to like kind of keep in touch with the here and now, right, is there like a one size fit all? platform that you will say, okay, you go on this, right, you should know majority of this shit. Huh, okay. No, right? Yeah, to be honest, I feel like Instagram is where, like, they're trying to compete with every freaking buddy, yeah, where they yeah, just yeah. launch threads, which yeah. is basically a competitor of Twitter. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, it's like they launch reels to fight with TikTok, but yeah. then they're like, anyways... Uh, let's just look try and like rival Twitter now. They so got a lot of capacity, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they got a lot of While money. While fighting also. TikTok, let's fight Twitter. Like, yeah. what the? Yeah. 
So we'll see how that goes. Lah. But then they also have like the photo platform. I mean, Instagram is where all the millennials are, I mean, from a photo sharing perspective. And there's no real comp- like, competitor when it comes to that. Mm. And then they also own Facebook. So Facebook is where like a lot WhatsApp. of... WhatsApp. Yeah, WhatsApp. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so I think Instagram is where like you can kind of be. But if you want to be in, you might need to look at some of the alternative platforms like TikTok. Because I mean, there was this old meme, right? Where they say... Instagram Reels is like two weeks ago TikTok, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's very different now, like, I think Instagram is all about aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and TikTok is a little bit more going towards long form content. So TikTok is moving to become a competitor of TikTok. Uh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, with their five minute series, all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And now talking content does better on TikTok as well. So yeah. if you want like more informative stuff, like for me these days, I don't even Google how to learn things anymore. Like if I'm searching, right, I'm actually using TikTok to search mm. as a search engine. Like, um, if I'm looking for a bag and I'm in a store and I'm like trying to find something, oh. search a bag on the bag. The SEO is so optimized uh, for TikTok, you can just search. Uh. Yeah. Damn, I still don't trust that. Uh. Even yeah. on Instagram, I only do it on Google. So like, I wouldn't, I might not search exactly for like price of the bag, but I might search like on Look. hand reviews and like oh. what people are saying about the bag. Because if it well, sucks, well. right, then people will be like, hey, this bag is not good online, uh, right? Yeah, I realise, uh, do you do a lot of online shopping? I don't think so, right? Yeah, for both of us, I think it's a guy thing. Uh, we don't really do a lot of... Oh no, I in store, yeah. I in the store, I looking at the bag, I'm searching on TikTok. Yeah, so for yeah. girls, right, I think it's very important to review. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like every time when she want to buy something, she will like review, review, review. Then for me, just, why don't you just click buy, dude? Like, just buy it. Yeah, 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 but for them, it's every single aspect, you know, it's like must QC with all your other girls. Yeah. yeah I guess there's another art form, uh, which is like, you know, we are like not so good at, yeah. Uh, qual- quality assurance, uh. <laughs> which is why I always think that female marketers, right, uh, when, when they write caption, right, it always sounds more personable and more captivating uh, compared to a male writing caption, right, which is like most of us, uh, we do our own <laughs> captions like, Bunch of AI talking. No, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Can you use chat GPT then after you ask a girl to help you edit oh, the I, content? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chat GPT, right in a female tone of voice. Yeah. Hey, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe let's try that. <laughs> okay, now, yeah. add more human emotion. Please, yeah. something like, yeah, you can... Humanize, you can, yeah, humanize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I, I write a lot of the caption and recently he also take over, right? And then... Uh, uh, we realized that uh, I, I just realized that oh my god why is our copy so different from like other clubs clubs copy la? yeah and because the other club is they I know who they are marketing people are and and generally it's just more female la. yeah and I, I and I prefer that kind of you know hey my friend the kind of vibe yeah yeah plays plays a big part man when when it's uh, entertainment industry but then I think maybe like if you want to sell I don't know theoretical physics books then maybe different yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. okay then um, yeah. So right now, other than doing your day job, which is marketing, and then you have a bunch of hobbies. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about your ice cream thing. Huh? I'm not doing it already. What is it? You don't want to re- resurrect me? Huh? I don't want la. I, uh. My ice cream is like quality in, quality out. Ma. So mm-hmm. my ingredients are super expensive. Can you sell one? Mm-mm-mm. If you're lucky enough, you try it all, but then like once you try, right, maybe you think about it forever. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. I still have people ask me, like, there was this one guy, right, he loved my ramen raisin so much. Every time he asked me, can you please make, right, for me 10 pints, he always buy 10 pints for me. After he tried ramen raisin, he went to all the ice cream shops in Singapore to try and find, exactly, cannot find. Then he asked me, where are you going to make again? I say, I don't know lah, sorry. I... Wow, see moon lah, the, the season, season. No, because I, last time I used to sell ma, then he always support me. He always support me when I first started also. Right, right, right. Then last time I sell very, very cheap ma. I sell him like $12, one pint kind, because homemade ma, right? Is it making a loss? Huh? Is uh, it making a loss? No, but like not, not much money, because after everything, right, he'll come and pick up for me some more. He'll ask someone, oh, I'll go to his restaurant, and I will bring all the 10 pints in one, oh. or like how many pints in one bag, and I give him, and then put, he'll put in his freezer immediately, kind. but he very fast, he finish one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah lah, I mean like even the ice cream that I make, right, like the stuff, like the alcohol that I use inside, it's not cheap eh. Mm. Like my rum and raisin now, I'm using, what am I using? My friend told me to use, I suddenly cannot remember. I'm gonna Google, Google rum. Yeah. yeah, what is it ah? Uh? Rum brands. Yeah, ice creams, yeah. Like, for you it's really like, Hey, I want to do something and you just do. It's like, there's no link man. Just I, ta, 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 ta. I actually read like textbooks eh, because I cannot learn from everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess like you kind of found your calling in marketing <laughs> and artist management, lah. Yeah. Which is something that you are doing consistently, and yeah, uh, that's a yeah. I'm using I'm using Diplomatico. 
Yeah, I heard of it. Yeah. Diplomatico. I look at this, one bottle is hundred and six dollars. Yeah. Every time I use it's like one <laughs> every time I use it's like one quarter of a bottle. Like, mm. If I make like a few pints. Mm. So yeah, it's not cheap. Like. How to sell this kind cannot. Uh. Oh, that's where the alcohol name come from, uh. Diplomatico, the song, right? <laughs> Fine dining, maybe, yeah. Yeah, but but recently, like I think this kind, right, is really if you use quality ingredients inside, the taste is really like a world apart. If you use cheap rum and you use like really expensive rum, like the notes that come out, the like I I'm allergic to alcohol, right? Unfortunately, lah. But wow, the ice cream that comes out, I take one spoon, I can tell the difference. It's really like this is how clear it is. I think if you try, you understand. Yeah, and I don't. I, I think you also because you make, then you like kind of like, mm. uh, pay attention more to the the every single ingredient and the layering yeah, yeah. It's like before I started producing music, right? I I hear the song as one song, but now I hear the song as like multiple layers. Ah, yeah, you kind of see it more clearly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I also got a friend who does like bartending. My best friend, mm. he does bartending, so he helped me with some of the stuff initially also. Mm-hmm. So he's like, oh yeah, if you want to use this like alcohol flavor like we try some funny one like chocolate and chili I, I think overseas people do it la, but here not many people do it la. we use like very high quality chocolate like those Belgium chocolate even the cocoa powder is also from like Belgium kind mm. eggs la, like one bag of chocolate is like $33 mm. that kind yeah, so we use those kind then we try with like chili then it's really quite interesting all the stuff that comes out la. but it's stuff that you cannot make commercially la, quite hard yeah so I guess the ingredient if it's the harder to come by then you'll be more unique la. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I think it cannot be said the same for music or art lah. I mean, what kind of pen you want to use different yeah. from other people, right? <laughs> I, I don't know, has it come to a point where people start using like manure or like shit to do painting? <laughs> I, I don't know. Have, 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 right? have, have, have. Yeah, well, I mean like how different can it be, you know? Use your own shit lor. Yeah, use your own shit lor. Yeah. Use human meat lah, human meat. Oh my god, mm. that's crazy, yeah. Oh. Actually, actually got some guy, he got asked like prisoners like to sign this waiver like when they die, right? Can he then take their body then the remains, use the uh, remains to go and feed fish or something like what? Then then what? Then of course activists they say cannot lah. They oh. say like screwed up and whatever you know uh, that kind of thing. Wow, well, damn we are them crazy lah as artists. <laughs> yeah, screw that man. Yeah, so as an artist, I have also come to uh, a realization that I also need to be my own biggest marketer lah which I think you have really dived full time into it. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about how that endeavor happened. Like, how do you decide that hey, you want to do marketing as not only a full time job, but also your, you start your own business, you know? Oh, um, hmm. I think not so much like starting my own business, but like I'm the kind of person that really enjoys doing stuff that makes me happy. I think, I think that's really important. Uh, I say that, but I also have, and sometimes I'm caught in situations where I'm like not happy and I don't want to move because com- comfort zone. Um, but like for me, a lot of the things that I'm doing currently, like social media or what, all stems from marketing. Mm. Like as a marketer, I care about how do I game that consumer, right? TikTok is an interesting audience. How do I win that audience over? Is there like a format or try and tested method or methodology that I can use to hook people in? That's what I wanted to try and figure out when I first started TikTok. Uh. Right. Yeah, so like art history was just a medium or vehicle for me to get there, mm. right? Same with my content today, right? Like I'm creating talking content because I want to know like, can I create con- It's not about me, right? As a person, I'm going to be someone that you can talk to a whole conversation with. But once I'm on social media, it's a totally different kind of space. Can I find the right optimal kind of content to make you interested in what I'm trying to say, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's very mm. interesting and exciting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for me, because I'm a musician through and through, right? I, I only see music, that's it. But then there are so many, like, all those US creators where they are just, like, uh, hot girl, hot guys, and then just talk about random stuff yeah. all day. And then I'm like, how do people kind of, like, build a living out of that and it's more and more um, uh, how to say uh, it's more and more common nowadays yeah that just people just like talking no, like nonsense random stuff no topic yeah oh, just yeah. Or, or can be sophisticated topic but, but doesn't match like your content one two three four five all different yeah. things so like sometimes I actually wish like if I was super pretty right like yeah. would that I wonder how that felt. I mean, I wonder how that feels like to just have like people's attention on you without you having to think twice about what it is you're talking about. Then maybe the content yeah. won't be so sophisticated really yeah, right yeah. now. But I think like that's really interesting though because for people who don't have that level of attraction, I mean like, I'm not saying that we are all like not good looking or what. I mean, beauty is definitely 
um, in the eye of the beholder. Correct. I remember I mean, my first caption when I just made threats, right? It's like, hey, um, you know, OnlyFans is clearly not our option. That's why we chose to be credible. That's why <laughs> we had to be credible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, um, I think that's why like you have to like then your content is like more focus is even more on your content la. if you're not yeah. you know like um, fitting to like what beauty standards and what people want to aspire to be then I think that is a bit harder la, for you unfortunately or you can be like relatable yeah like or PewDiePie can... kind of thing yeah but I like PewDiePie's content yeah, he's just like but normal, like he low-key kind of problematic no uh, why yeah uh? I don't know I just feel like there's a lot of problematic stuff about him but okay let's not talk about problematic <laughs> I mean, um, he's very opinionated, la, I would say. Yeah. And then he kind of like creates some issues. But then he has his uh, close friends that always support him. And yeah, then yeah, he's yeah. a 9 army now, 19 year old army. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's quite nice. And also recently he had a baby, also, right? Yeah. yeah so I, kinda, I think it's kind of like a full circle moment for him uh, where he really get everything that he wants. And then now he's just doing side quests. Yeah. Similar like Gordon Ramsay, you know. Same, yeah. So, then um, your marketing firm is it called a marketing firm or what? What do you call it? Huh, my agency. With my agency. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. Fun hobby la, yeah. side thing that we do. So, who do you manage? Uh, so Jean Seizure is one of the people that we, uh, I think hmm. first one of the first few people that we started working with when we first started the company la. I so, think Jean Seizure back then was like maybe like. 8,000, 9,000 followers, right? On and TikTok. Then, and uh, then Instagram also. No, Instagram, I think when we signed her, she had about 13,000. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. And then recently, just BAM! Like an exponential. Yeah. Yeah. She's been like doing a lot of stuff on Reels. She had a lot of videos that went viral. Um, I think also like she's been consistently creating content. Like. She's one of those kind of people that I think... It's not just music, but mm, martial arts and acting. Other and stuff. Quite, yeah, yeah, quite multidisciplinary also. But what took her to the top? Did, did you guys... Uh, is it part of your design that you created this program for her or is it just her alone? Um, I think it's definitely attributable to everybody's success. Not just like one person's success or anything. Mm -mm. Um, like, while I can say like I'm the one who gave like social media tips, but at the end of the day, like the content is hers and the style is hers, right? So I could give the same tip to three different people, but the results may be vastly different. Mm. Um, I think for her, she definitely has a talent. She definitely has a calling in life, which is really to be a musician. Lah. So I'm very happy for her that she's able to hone that tip and make it hers, right? Mm -hmm. You know, not just on TikTok, but also, you know, on like Instagram, making certain things happen. I think on Instagram, her base is more, uh, they, they care more about her. They want to know about her. So in that way, it gives her a good direction on like what kind of content she should post. Um, mm. And then it definitely helps that, you know, on our side, we've helped her um, streamline some of the brand deals, really like up her and really like put her out there when it comes to like events, when it comes to, you know, working with brand partners and stuff like that. So You do the administrative yeah. things la, so yeah. she can focus more on the art yeah, and yeah, so. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's good, right? Like, I think as, and I understand because I come from like a artsy kind of background, like have the artist temperament also, mm. which is that sometimes as an artist, I want to create what I love. I don't want to be bogged down by all the administrative stuff. I don't want to be handling, you know, negotiations. I mean, you negotiate with someone, take a while. Give red card, take a while. Then after that, you still need to consider like, do I want to do the campaign? And then how do I plan the campaign? How do I do this? How do I do that, right? Yeah. When maybe I just want to be handling the, the content that I create, make my music, make my art, and call it a day, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's also how we can commercialize our art then get a partner that can do all that. I think you can focus on the art, yeah. Which is, I I heard uh, Anna Winter was saying that um, Tom Ford when he left Chanel, then he had to leave with uh, another partner of his also left Chanel, and then they kind of formed this Tom Ford brand, yeah. where Tom Ford is just doing the art, and then the yeah. the other guy is doing the business, yeah, uh, yeah, And then yeah. Anna Winter said it's very difficult to do uh, the art and the business well at the same time, yes, uh, yes. which is why most of the time it's two different people. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like Mr. Beast and his uh, manager yeah, or yeah. CEO. Correct, correct. Yeah, and then I, I didn't I didn't like believe it at first. I thought I can do everything by myself. As now at this point where I started to do everything by myself, I realized, oh my God, I'm so freaking swamped because it's not about doing everything, but it's about doing everything well. Then you can be competitive with other people, yeah. right? So if and you want to be art well, yeah. you know, why got time to do? I and mean, like I think that's quite sad also because a lot of people don't see that. Like as artists, they see that they can do everything themselves because they're not willing to part with like 
the money that they earn because they are so scared that they might not get more. Mm. Right? But I think it's also a mentality thing. Or like artists who, for example, get management and then they decide that like, okay, la, now I've got free time, I can do whatever I want. And then that also changes the perspective. You know, I think the conversation can go many ways. I think it takes the right combination of people, the right mindset. Wait, you say free so. time. Uh, okay, now, okay, now i got free time. Then what would they do other? Hello? So maybe you said, like you said, you need to do art well. Right. You need to do business well, right? So yeah. if... Previously, you were struggling to do both and you were doing it at a mediocre level. Mm. Now that I've taken away stuff for you, right, the administrative stuff away for you, then technically you should be focusing on one thing and doing music well, or doing your art well, right? Right. But if I take that away and I'm doing well in my aspect and you are not, and you're still cruising along or you're doing something else, then... That oh, that means the free time instead yeah. of focusing oh, more on oh, yeah. art. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go and do some fly kite yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, then, then, I mean, that's a waste, right? Because you are not really maximizing your potential. Maximizing the partnership as well. Yeah. So then it's quite a waste because like, at the end of the day, it needs two hands to clap. Like, I can be, I, I always tell this to Jean, like, it's like, hey, we are like, if you want to get to this point, right? Like, I'm here and then I'm going up, then you're here. Then like, we both cannot reach there. Because we are like, I'm here, but you're not here. Then I cannot pull you up all the way there, you see. Like, you also have to contribute to, for us to reach the destination together. Yeah, 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 because yeah. if you don't reach the destination together, then it's hard, lah, right? Yeah, mm. and I think, um, I don't know whether it's this for everyone, but I think a lot of artists are not particularly well known for time management uh, also, yeah. right? They, because the, the, the creative process is like, it's so strange, it's such a strange thing. Correct, correct. It's that like when it comes, it's just like you are on a roll, and if it doesn't come, like maybe two years or so, you just stuck down there. Yeah. yeah it, can be, it can be as bad as that. Yeah, and I, I guess I understand that feeling as well because sometimes I feel like I need to travel, I need to get out, I need to talk to people just to be inspired. Sometimes I can be talking to people and then like something just clicks or something just inspires me. That's why like I feel the need to constantly be learning about something or trying something. A lot of people think it's very erratic. They think that I'm too wretched. Lah. They'll be like, oh, why are you doing this new thing? Why are you start this new hobby? Why are you ditch your hobby? I don't think it's hobby? wretched. Lah. It's more kinda, like scatter, scatter yeah. brain, lah, scatter thought. Lah. No, wretched yeah, is yeah. Like a different, a more negative. Lah. Yeah, la, yeah la. but like, I think in a way, it's not really, I have really achieved what I wanted to do with one thing and I'm ready to move on to the next one. Lah. I don't feel you know, sad right, right, that right, I, right. I'm not doing that anymore. You don't have the typical Japanese mentality uh, where you want to like, you know, I don't know, like make the best sushi rice for the next 99 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, I'm okay, okay I can make rice, can you? Yeah. I, I think that's, that's a, it's definitely more uh, lift a lot of burden. Uh. If you want uh, every precise thing you also want to kena, right, then wow, you very you are very trapped. Uh. Yeah, yeah, and personally, I think I'm quite the opposite of you. Is I'm very focused on one thing, right? And then recently, I just had a, a day where uh, Joshua Dylan uh, invited me. Hey, you wanna go out on a Sunday? Just go and watch people DJ in front of McDonald's. There is literally a random gig at a bar, and a bar right beside is Guzman and Gomez and McDonald's. And then apparently, when they DJ, the McDonald's they all never complain, and it's such a vibe. Everybody just like circling, gathering around and stuff. And I'm like, what the heck? You all make friends with the McDonald's and stuff. How is it even poss- possible? You know. And then we just down there, and then we just chill. And then um, because the the bar is too expensive, so we go Guzman and Gomez get a five dollar beer and get burrito and then eat and chill and just do nothing, man. And then I, I'm just like, I, I just felt so energized and like so inspired. And it's very atypical for me to like hang out and chill. So I think that there are like certain truths to whatever you're doing. Like, and I can understand why you can get hooked to it, you know. Like do one thing, okay, next, 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 next. Yeah, but I don't know, eh. The, everything must balance, I guess. Yeah, I mean like even just hearing your story, I feel quite inspired, eh. I don't know, I just feel like, wow, like very chill. And sometimes I look at you and I feel quite inspired by you also as like a very technical DJ law. Like you've reached, I think you've reached a level of like DJing or a level of your craft where I feel like a lot of dedication and effort goes into it. And sometimes I do question myself like, what if I never really make anything of myself? You know, like what if I never specialize in anything and I never think about where I want to be and I never become successful? I think that's my worry uh, that I'll never become successful. Uh. So sometimes when I look at people who are very uh, specialized, I actually am a bit Envious, I would say. Mm, um, that is, I guess, the, the traditional route. Lah. But then nowadays, you're like, you know, with like social media content, and everybody can talk about anything under the sun, right? Uh, I think it's like an equal opportunity game. Really. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I guess it's more of like, your preference. Uh. Like some people prefer to go deep, some people prefer to go wide. And somehow we can monetize it all under this thing called social media. <laughs> it's the magic of the 20th century. Yeah. 
so yeah man um, definitely we're gonna have a part two to this conversation because i think there's so many things that we haven't go through yet like uh we can talk more about your agency and the next level that you're gonna take because right now gene seizure is probably your main focus and eventually when you're like okay gene seizure is on autopilot already right then you can get handle more artists we definitely can talk about like your increased repertoire in your you know and maybe hopefully one day you know you can li- you can leave your day job i can leave my day job you can leave your day job then we can do our shit full time <laughs> that'll be the freaking dream okay so thank you so much this is reverie podcast with mix